Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today I have a review for you of the Shockflow Portable EVSE. This is an EVSE. It's a unit that safely provides the right amount of current from the wall to your battery electric or plug-in hybrid vehicle. Uh, here in North America, uh, they're going to use J1772 as the standard. So if we take a look at the end that plugs into your car, uh, right away it does feel very solid. It has good ergonomics. Uh, the grip is at a, uh, an angle that feels nice when you plug it in. Right at the end, I can see uh, an FCC logo here. Have a nice solid click when you press the button. And it is lockable. Uh, if you want, you could certainly run a little padlock in there to uh, lock it shut. Uh, I see a nice gasket down here. Uh, we have the specs on the tag right underneath here and a nice rubber dust cap to cover the end, keep it clean when you're not using it. Uh, also at the end here looks like we have a nice little bit of strain relief. And as we follow our cord down, uh, this is a 20 foot cord, 21 foot uh, in total length. Now if we go to the body of the unit, uh, we see that it's got a nice textured finish to it, uh, brand name, and then there's two LEDs on here. One's green and one's red. Uh, most of what that does is lets you know your charging status. The green LED will show when you're plugged in, when you're ready to charge, uh, when you're charging, and when you're finished charging, all with just that little green LED. Now there's a number of safety features on this unit and the red LED will indicate uh, if there's any sort of a problem, it'll show you what that what that is. Um, I'm seeing some nice strain relief at both ends of this. And then if we look on the back, uh, we have some details here. This is a 16 amp unit. So this can provide up to 16 amps of current to your car. And it can run on either 120 or 240 volts, and we'll get to that cord end in a moment here. Uh, also listed right on here, um, it can run uh, 50 or 60 hertz, uh, maximum power 3.6 kilowatt. Uh, it is IP65 rated, and what that means is basically that this is sealed up against the weather. Uh, so for example, let's say you're charging outside, you have one of those uh, outlet covers that allows you to be plugged in and using it even in the rain. Uh, you're fine with having this out in the rain, no issues there whatsoever. Uh, then we also see uh, listed right on the back uh, what the common meanings are of the different LED functions and some of the uh, a couple logos on the bottom here including FCC. Uh, also on the back right at the top we have a single keyhole uh, if you want to be able to mount the unit just hanging in on the wall on a screw or a nail. And then when we look at the cord end, this is a 240 volt NEMA 620 connection. So that's good for up to 20 amps, 240 volts. Now keep in mind, that's a little bit different style plug than you're used to just plugging straight into your uh, 120 volt wall outlet. But what's nice about this is it also comes with a simple adapter that you can plug into here. And then we have our NEMA 515 connector on the end. That's what you're used to having on your toaster, vacuum cleaner, anything else. So this unit right here can run on either 120 or 240 volts. It doesn't care. And you get the included adapter so that you can plug it in either way. The spec sheet for this unit lists a lot of intelligent safety protections. Uh, over voltage, low voltage, overcurrent, uh, overcharge protection, leakage protection, lightning protection, things like that. But one thing I actually could test is the ground protection. That was pretty easy. Right here I have a cube tap that happens to have the ground pin broken off on it. So I simply plugged in the charging unit through that cube tap into the wall. Right away we did get power here, but it also indicated to me the lack of ground. Now on my car, I could still charge up. The unit actually leaves that to the vehicle. So on my car, uh, I have been in situations before where I've been out traveling, and even though I had power available to me, it may not have been grounded properly. So in that case, I like that I'm still able to charge. I also tested this unit out on a friend's Nissan Leaf, 
and that vehicle does not allow you to charge if it senses that there is not proper grounding. So in this case, it's up to the vehicle. One of the other features that I actually could test is overheat protection. Let's say it's summer, you live in a desert climate, uh, this unit is out in the sun and you're uh, pulling full current through it. Does it shut down if it gets too hot where it could actually otherwise cause a problem? Well, what I did is I know there's a temperature sensor inside here and I had the cover off and I simply used a heat gun to blow hot air down into here. And sure enough, the unit shut down and showed with the LEDs that it was in the overheat protection mode. Since I had the cover off, I also wanted to see uh, what makes this weatherproof, what gives it that IP65 rating. And I found that it actually has a very nice silicone gasket inside, uh, one on either side, and then the strain relief itself also acts as a gasket in the end. Inside, everything looked great. The soldering was clean, uh, terminals were tight, and it just, in general, looked like some very good electronics. So right now I'm just going to run the unit on 120 volts and I have it plugged into a kilowatt style power meter so that I can see what happens. Uh, right away I see that we get a blinking green LED that just shows that we're plugged in, we have power, and we're ready to go. Then after plugging the car in and it starts to charge, we get sort of a pulsing green LED. Then after it's fully charged, the green LED lights up solid. Now my car is an older one, it's a first generation EV, and it only charges at up to 3.3 kilowatt. This unit here can do 3.6. So basically I'm charging at about 13 amps, whereas this can provide up to 16. So that's also why I invited a friend over. Uh, his car has a much more powerful charger built into it, and we plugged his in to see how much power we draw. Now what we did notice was that the car would draw the full 16 amps, whether it was on 240 or 120 volts. So if you have a car that can max out the unit and you're charging on 120 volts, just make sure that you use an outlet that's on a 20 amp circuit. Now one of the other things I really like about this EVSE is just that it's nice and compact. The actual body itself here, real small. Uh, let's compare that to my old Chevy Volt EVSE. This thing is easily twice as big and it only does 120 volts, whereas this does 120 and 240. Uh, it makes a very good portable EVSE, just keep in your car. And to go with that, it does also include a pretty nice little carrying case. So you can just have it tucked away in there, zip it up, hide this way in the back of your car. So when you need it, you have it nice and handy. So overall, I really like this unit. It's very affordable. It does 120 and 240 volts, comes with a power adapter and a case. Uh, it is great as a small portable unit, um, an extra one that you keep around. Maybe just put one in at work, keep one with you in your car. Now, it is only a 16 amp unit. Uh, that's great for older EVs and plug-in hybrids. If you have a newer electric car with a larger battery, in that case, odds are for your primary charger, you probably want a faster EVSE, and you're probably looking at uh, 32 amp, maybe even 40 amp EVSEs. Uh, now, the only other thing I can think of is that there's no special features on here in terms of connectivity. It doesn't have web connection. It doesn't have an app, anything like that. Uh, some of the high-end EVSEs do have some of those features, but at the same time, that kind of feels redundant or overkill to me because features like timers and things like that, generally they're built right into the car anyways. So personally, I really don't feel any need for that. If you're looking for a 16 amp EVSE that's affordable and portable and gives you the flexibility of 120 or 240 volt charging, then this one might be for you. I hope you enjoy these video reviews. For more information, check it out at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.